students and welcome to module four of business communications. In this module, we're going to be going over planning and decision making. So learning outcomes of this lecture, consider contextual forces that may affect whether, how, to, whom, and when a message is sent. Identify the purpose of the message and the appropriate channel and medium. Develop clear perceptions of the audience to enhance the impact and persuasiveness of the message, improve goodwill, and establish and maintain credibility of the communicator. Apply tactics for adapting messages to the audience, including those for communicating ethically and responsibly. Recognize the importance of an organization when planning the first draft. So here's a planning checklist for business messages. Determine your general purpose, inform, persuade, entertain, facilitate, interaction, or motivate. So which are these purposes are you trying to convey? Determine your desired outcome. Make sure your purpose is realistic. Make sure your timing is appropriate. So don't ask for some crazy project to be due in one day or two days when it really takes two to three weeks. Make sure your sources are credible. Make sure the message reflects positively on your business. Determine audience size, determine audience composition, determine audience knowledge and awareness of the topic. So if you're using a lot of um, abbreviations or, um, you know, you want to make sure that your audience is aware of those abbreviations, such as medical acronyms, you know, um, if your audience is not into medical acronyms, you might want to consider spelling them out. Anticipate probable responses, select the correct channel email, social media, text, LinkedIn message. Uh, make sure the information provided is accurate, ethical, and pertinent. So here's the process for planning and preparing your messages, and I have all these steps listed out for you. So step one is consider the context, dimensions of the context, physical, social, chronological, and cultural. Organizational culture. Shared assumptions that a group learns as it solves external adaptation and internal integration of problems. Taught to new members is a correct way to perceive, think, or to feel. This affects the type, amount, and quality of communication within an organization. Step two, determine the purpose and select an appropriate channel or medium. So what's the purpose of the business message? Is it to enable the receiver to understand logical information? to establish a good relationship with the audience, to establish and maintain credibility as a professional in order to increase persuasiveness. So this last one might be some sort of post you do on LinkedIn to show that you um, have credibility. Channel choice, cross, excuse me, channel choice considerations, cost, control. So is there a need for permanent record, richness versus leanness, amount of information conveyed? Speed, time required for feedback. So if you post on something on social media, you might get feedback immediately versus an email or a voicemail. Channels of communication. So there's written and examples of written could be memos. I don't know if anyone really uses the term memos anymore. Letters, emails, instant or text messages. No one uses faxes anymore. This is obviously an older graphic. Uh, press releases, company websites, blogs, um, and reports. Oral is face-to-face -face or interpersonal, telephone, voice messages, tele and video conferences, so Zoom, uh, Microsoft Google Meets, or Microsoft Teams, Google Meets, Skype, that sort of thing. Speeches, meetings, and podcasts. Podcasts are huge now. Nonverbal could be supplements of oral forms. Visual supplements written in oral communication in the form of diagrams, photographs, charts, tables, video, and artwork. So the different channels of communication. So when do you choose the different channels? So an uh, instant message or a text message. So instant message, think uh, maybe a direct message in Facebook or uh, for those that use applications such as WeChat or um, WhatsApp, WeChat. Uh, what's another one? Slack is a huge one that people use in businesses. So that's what I mean by instant message or text message. A lot of people text now. Informal use among peers at similar levels within an organization. You need a fast, inexpensive connection with a colleague over a small issue and limited amount of information. So just those quick answers. That's why um, Slack is used a lot in businesses now. 
Email, you need to communicate, but time is not the most important consideration. So meaning you don't need feedback in less than half an hour. You need to spend send attachments, uh, you know, documents. Letter, you need to inform, persuade, deliver bad news or negative messages and document the communication. Reports, you need to document the relationships between large amounts of data to inform an internal or external audience. And proposals, you need to persuade an audience with complex arguments and data. So these are different, some of the different channels of communication and how to use them. So here's a written communication activity you guys can um, kind of do on your own here. You don't have to turn this in, um, but it's good practice if you're not really understanding this concept very much. So here's a scenario. You're a sales rep for one of the following companies. Hydro Flask, Aloha Printing, Palmer Animal Hospital, Lululemon, GoPro, Life Source, Chiropractic. So I just grabbed some random businesses that are located here in North County. Write an email to a new customer introducing a new product or service. Your customers could be business to consumer or business to business depending on the company you choose. An example could be if you're selling GoPros, your client could be Amazon, Dick's Sporting Goods, Surf Rides, something similar. Um, you won't need to compare or show this, discuss this in class, obviously, because this is online class. But this is a good little exercise for you to do. Process for planning and preparing continued. Step three is envisioning the audience. What do you know about your audience? What are their needs and concerns? Sensitivity, awareness to culture, diversity issues is a must. You must be aware of that. Be aware of age, economic level, and education, occupational background. Know that establishing rapport is part of business. Don't force it though. Be consistently positive, supportive, and respectful. Step four, adapting the message to audience needs and concerns. So communicate ethically and responsibly, write concisely and project a positive tone. Focus on the audience's point of view. Use you language versus I language. Build and protect goodwill. Uh, you can focus on what you can do and not what you can't do. So again, being positive, focusing on what you can do, providing a solution. Step five is organizing your message. So outlining, just like you would write any other type of report or document, you wanna have an outline first. Identifying central ideas and details and arranging them in the right sequence before you start writing. This encourages accuracy and brevity, permits concentration, saves time in structuring ideas, and you don't forget things that you're missing. So the two different types of writing styles are formal versus informal. So an example of formal would be, please note the attached delivery data for July 2019. Informal would be, here's the delivery data for last month. So here are the differences here. Emphasis. Maximum emphasis. So there's three different emphasis here. We have maximum, which sales have increased across the United States because of our latest promotion efforts in our largest and most successful market. A medium type of emphasis would be because of our latest promotion efforts in our largest and most successful market, sales have increased across the United States. A minimum emphasis would be the United States, which has experienced a sales increase, is our largest and most successful market. So here are the examples of the three differences there. Direct versus indirect writing. Direct writing states the main purpose directly at the beginning and leaves little room for misinterpretation. Clear from the first sentence about your purpose and goal used when you expect a positive response. Indirect writing. You introduce your main idea after the opening paragraph. This can be useful if you need a strong opening to get the attention of what you perceive may be the uninterested audience. You use this when you expect a negative response better for bad news so take a note of this you're going to need to know this later indirect writing is better for bad news active versus passive voice so an active voice is a sentence structure in which the subject carries out the action so an example of this would be all sales orders are processed daily by mckenzie sentences tend to be shorter more precise and easier to understand a passive voice is a sentence structure in which the subject receives the action Mackenzie processes all sales orders daily. Business communication resources tend to recommend active voice as a preferred style. So take a note of this as well. Business communication resources tend to recommend active voice as a preferred style. 
So here is a chart I made up for you guys of commonly confused words, and I mess these up. Uh, then and then, I always have to think when I'm writing. So except or except, effect or effect, it's or it's, then or then, your or yours. So here is a chart on the differences and how and when to use them. So some final tips for writing. Uh, everything you access via an employer system is subject to inspection. Always remember that. Everything you write or record reflects you and your business or organization, even if it's stored in a Google or Yahoo account. Respect personal space by not forwarding every email you think is funny. Use a concise but relevant and informative phrase for the subject line. Email the receiver before sending large attachments as they may exceed the limit of the receiver's inbox. So I actually do this a lot when I know I'm going to be sending a lot of images to someone. I ask them in advance, hey, am I going to be able to send you 10 megabytes of images or would you rather have me um, send them to you a different way? And sometimes they'll reply back, um, yes, that's not a problem. Or they might say, please put the images, drop them in the Google Drive at this link. So it's always good to ask first. So here's another little activity you can do on your own here. You don't have to turn this in. Uh, we usually do this in, the, in class. Uh, so select at least three examples of writing from different kinds of sources, such as a website, online textbook, email blog, report, online magazine, study, case study, white paper. Uh, according to the style characteristics discussed in this section, so style characteristics here, how would you characterize the style of each one? So good little activity for you guys to try here. Okay, module four assignments is going to be discussion four and your second quiz, which is on planning messages.